Welcome to Egypt. Enticing images of timeless hospitality and ancient attractions. A picture postcard view the authorities are keen to promote. But there is another Egypt, a military-backed regime, where dreams of freedom have been crushed. It's understandable to be scared with a regime that is not hesitant about killing. I've never seen a regime as bloody as Sisi's regime. It all looked so different seven years ago. This was Tahrir Square in February 2011. The night the people broke free of President Hosni Mubarak. Ending 30 years of authoritarian rule. Or so they hoped. But now the square feels like a place of lost opportunity. Well, standing here in Tahrir Square seven years on, there's really nothing to indicate that this was the cradle of an uprising, that it was here that the people toppled an autocrat. The monument is bare, no list of names of all of those who were killed, and that's just the way the authorities want it. It's as if the revolution has been erased, and along with it, the hope it brought. Icons of the uprising, like Allah Abdel Fattah, have been treated as enemies of the state. He was a leading light of the Tahrir protests, secular, articulate, a software developer. Abdel Fattah was accused of organizing this protest. The demonstrators appeared peaceful. The authorities were not. <laughs> Others told the authorities they organized the protest, but he was still sentenced to five years. Another member of Egypt's Generation Jail. His fractured family go through the motions. Without a much loved son, husband and brother. Human rights groups say there are thousands like them in Egypt, families of political prisoners. His sister Mona campaigns against civilians being tried in military courts. In this household, resistance runs in the family. But Munna says the struggle for change is harder than ever under President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. But the level of bloodiness is beyond anything I've ever heard or experienced. And the way they have managed to desensitize people uh, towards death, uh, to, um, to, to belittle the value of people's lives, um, to, to make people get used to death sentences, to uh, forced disappearances and abduction, to torture, to torture the victims. This is becoming daily news. <laughs> Her brother has another year to serve, then faces a further five years on probation with stringent conditions. In this tightly knit group, the empty space at the table is keenly felt. Those who end up in custody can expect the harshest treatment. My sources say torture is commonplace, but few victims are willing to speak. <laughs> Mahmoud Mohammed Hussein has first-hand experience of the latest torture techniques. He was accused of attending a banned protest 
and held without trial for more than two years. He says the only reason he was arrested, aged just 18, was because of his T-shirt. The slogan read, a nation without torture. What got up to the feeling of my body? كان في كهرباء منها هنا وفي الجزء اللي تحت كهربت برضو فيه يعني كنت ما أعرفش يعني كنتش عارف إحساسي أو أو شعوري إيه ساعتها بس كنت حزين وبتألم جدا وكان في ضرب بشكل متعمد يكون في المنطقة اللي أنا قلت له إن رجل فيها تعبانة لدرجة إن هو خلاني لحد من من دلوقتي من شهور قليلة جدا كنت بستعمل عكاز وعملت أكتر من عملي. Aren't you afraid that by speaking out like this that the authorities could come after you again? آه هو أنا طبعا مدرك ده كويس جدا وعارف إن يعني يعني هو أنا مش مش موجود عشان أقول مجرد كلام وخلاص أنا بقول الكلام علشان يعني هحب إن هو يكون يتشاف لعل وعسى يعني يتخذ بي و. ويكون يعني تحاول تنهي حاجة أو أو على الأقل تخليهم يكونوا أشد حرصا في إن في إنهم ما يعملوش حاجة يعني أتمنى أن يكون كلامي بيتسمع ويتخذ بي يعني. Torture victims used to have one refuge, the Al Nadim Center in Cairo. But last year, the authorities moved in and forced it to close its doors. Its co-founder, a psychiatrist, says the prevalence of torture in the CC era is the worst she's ever known. You know, I work in this field since 1993. And I've been hearing about this field since my university years. What I've been seeing and what my colleagues at the center have been seeing since 2013 is unheard of. It was never, never, ever that bad. So how widespread would you say the practice is now? As widespread as the country. As widespread as the country. What would you say to government officials here in Egypt who deny there is torture? You're liars. I would say you are liars. I would say you know there is torture because you practice it. And then there are those who are hidden behind the sun. That's what Egyptians call the growing numbers who vanish from the streets and are held in secret by the state. Anyone opposing the regime is at risk. Human rights campaigners say enforced disappearances are a trademark of the Sisi era. They have documented at least 1,500 cases in the past four years. But they believe the real figure is much higher. This is Zubaida, a student of 23 who wants to open her own business. Her mother says she and Zubaida were arrested near a demonstration in 2014 and convicted of offenses, including attending a banned protest. She says they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and spent seven months in jail, but were later acquitted. She tells me that in 2016, Zubaida was detained again at a police checkpoint and disappeared. She was dumped by the roadside after 28 days, a changed girl. و يعني عملوا فيها كل كل اللي غضب ربنا عملوا فيها كل شيء يعني مش كويس عملوا فيها فطبعا انا صدمت طبعا 
But her legal papers show the anguish did not end there. As Zubaida was struggling to recover, she disappeared for the second time last April. Her mother says neighbours saw her being taken by armed and masked police. Zubaida's treasured keepsakes are just as she left them, waiting for her return. Her mother refuses to give up hope, refuses to be silenced. We wanted to ask the authorities about Zubaida's disappearance and the other cases in this report, but they wouldn't give us an interview. Previously, the authorities have told me there is no systematic torture. But if mistakes are made, officers are punished. They've also denied there are enforced disappearances and widespread human rights abuses. On the banks of the Nile, there's little hint of change. Egypt looks locked in the past. Elections are coming, but President Sisi doesn't need to worry about the outcome. Several potential challengers have been intimidated out of the race. Many here are concerned about security amid bomb attacks by the so-called Islamic State. The president says he's waging war on terror but human rights campaigners say he's using that as a pretext to wage war on dissent. Having been here for more than four years, I know a lot of the problems that Egypt is facing. There are real economic issues. There are serious security threats from IS. But this is the most populous country in the Arab world. And if Egypt can't steer a course towards real democracy, that's a problem for the Middle East, and it's a problem for the West. And I'm leaving here with questions. How long before all of the repression here starts to backfire? And how many more prisons can the regime fill?